It's my pleasure to introduce Vince Coakley. <clears throat> Many of us know Vince on his daily radio show from 10 to 12 on WORD. I've come to truly appreciate the firm but respectful way he engages his audience and the callers on his show. He has a servant's heart and embodies the spirit of the quote of Thomas Jefferson when he said that every difference of opinion is not a difference of principle. As we learned last night, Vince began his broadcasting career at the age of 16 in Newark, Delaware, and he has traveled through different radio and television uh, work, and including uh, an online show that he did. After graduating from college, he worked at two different television stations in Lexington, Kentucky, and we are fortunate to have him here in the upstate. Thank you for being with us, Vince Coakley. Good afternoon. It's good to be with you. Everybody still have energy? Hopefully I will breeze through this and I've got a person here uh, keeping me on track with time and hopefully I'll be able to breeze right through this. First off, I just want to thank everyone for coming because uh, this is not my event, but I want to make it very clear. I appreciate everyone coming out because this really embodies what I am all about. Uh, simply sitting or standing behind a microphone for two hours and talking with people, uh, and I don't want to diminish that. There's a value in that. It frankly doesn't mean a lot to me if it doesn't move, move beyond just talk, just conversation, because it's important for us to be involved and be engaged, and that's what I talk about on the program all the time. So I very much want to, uh, in that spirit, just communicate something that I think is vitally important in talking about the Constitution. Now, when I mentioned that on the radio program, a lot of people immediately think, well, wait a second here, we're gonna talk about the document, the Constitution? No, I wanna talk about something a little more personal, and that is who we are as a people. It's not about the document today, it's about what we are made of, because I think that is what's vitally important and really encapsulating everything that we've discussed today it drives home the importance of our engagement and our involvement in this process. I want to just share a few quotes with you, and we may not go into all of these. John Adams, I'm sure you've heard of this guy. And he talks about the danger of democracy. And I'm not going to go into all of this because I just want to encourage you perhaps to read this later on. The warning about democracy, because what ultimately democracy turns into is mob rule. And I don't want to say too much more about this because I think you can probably read the line, read between the lines of the potential of where this goes today. As we've been here, there is a big uh, rally for a presidential candidate for today, uh, and there's also a counter demonstration. What I want to encourage you on is, is something very, very important that we don't get caught in the crossfire between two parties where neither one of them is correct. And I've talked about this repeatedly on the radio broadcast. We need to present a positive message and a positive course for the future and not get into a pattern of reacting, reacting, because it's not a healthy path. I want to touch on a couple of these quotes from Thomas Jefferson because these are vital, because it talks about the importance of self-governance. The whole idea behind this wonderful experiment we have is what? It's about self-governance. We are a people who are governing ourselves, and increasingly, as we have done less governing of ourselves, what happens? We have more big government. The qualifications for self-government, and this was shared earlier, I believe, in society, are not innate. They're the result of habit and long training. Can I suggest to you something, folks? Do you know where this training begins? It begins at home. It begins at home. And the reality is, before we've lost Washington, before we've, we've lost Columbia, 
and wherever other capitals may be represented here, we've lost self-government in our homes. And that's where it has to be recovered first. I love this quote. Without becoming familiarized with the habits and practice of self-government, the political vessel is all sail and no ballast. Wow. That's pretty powerful, isn't it? It is a happy truth that man is capable of self-government and only rendered otherwise by the moral degradation designedly superinduced on him by the wicked acts of his tyrant. Wow. Do you know there are people right now, the socialist movement is very actively engaged in doing what? Undermining us morally because they know that as the family breaks down, as churches break down, where are you going to turn? Federal government. And yet on the positive side, we also have this important communication. We're a people capable of self-government and worthy of it. Again, another quote from Thomas Jefferson. And here, this key point from John Adams. Our Constitution made only for a moral and religious people. How much conversation are you going to hear about that during this political cycle? Let me just say something to you. If you think we're going to recover our, the, the integrity of our founding documents, if you think we're going to recover that in this country without a moral and a religious foundation, it's fantasy, folks. It's fantasy. But I believe that we can do this. How many of you, and, and I want to be respectful of other people who may be represented here from different backgrounds, how many of you would identify yourselves as Christian? Okay, that's very clearly a majority of the people in this room. And my idea behind this is not to shame anyone or, or be disrespectful toward people of different beliefs. I'm approaching this from a Christian vantage point, but I want to communicate this in a way that perhaps other people from different backgrounds could also embrace. And, and what's important here about governance is in the spiritual influence for the Christian is the understanding that Jesus Christ is Lord. He's the only person who is Lord and should be venerated as such. Why is this so important? Well, it will help you resist the temptation to look anywhere else for that kind of authority. Same thing with the phrase under God. And I say this of politicians. It's important to understand that if we have politicians who do not believe that they are under God, they will ultimately think that they are God. Always happens. What's also important in spiritual development, and I'm going to touch on these and develop these because they're very important. It's very important for people who are spiritually minded and spiritually constituted to provide discernment. This is one of the most lacking things that we have right now, especially in our political culture, discernment. One of the things I talked about on my program yesterday, and we were discussing the presidential race, and what I've said is it's very important that we look for people who have shown a pattern of, a pattern of faithfulness over time. That's vital. <laughs> It's one thing for somebody to come in and they're, they're going to hit on all of our wonderful talking points. Oh, look, I've checked the box on all these conservative issues or whatever. Look at the person's life. Do you see a pattern of faithfulness over time? If you do not see a pattern of faithfulness over time, here's my question for you. How do you expect that person to uphold their oath to defend the Constitution of the United States of America? It's pure fantasy to think that will happen. And this is the importance of Christian influence. <coughs> discernment, discernment. Let me add something pretty interesting, though, as an aside. One of my favorite columnists happens to be an atheist. Charles C.W. Cook wrote a great piece a few weeks ago. And I looked at that, and I thought to myself, oh my goodness, here is a man who is an atheist who has more discernment than many so-called evangelical Christians. And it's because we failed in this next thing, and that is to be salt and light. Salt and light. What is that exactly? And I want to come back to this. You're the salt of the earth, but if salt has lost its taste, how shall its saltiness be restored? It's no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled under people's feet. This is what's happened to much of what is passed off as Christianity today. 
There is absolutely no virtue in the salt. Therefore, it's trampled over. The question for us, what kind of seasoning are we providing? Are we providing a positive influence, or are we being co-opted by political parties or by personalities? This is where we, again, have to assert our leadership. Not in a nasty, derogatory way, but again, provide discernment and, where possible, correction. I want to back up to that last slide because this is another important part of this picture. You see, we cannot restore what we're looking to see here without family. This is a scripture from the Old Testament, Malachi. I'm going to send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and terrible day of the Lord. He will restore the hearts of the fathers to their children, the hearts of the children to their fathers. So I will not come and smite the lamb with a curse. He will turn the hearts of fathers to their children, the hearts of children to their fathers. This is critical, folks. Isn't this what we've got a problem with in our country right now? The breakdown doesn't start in the political system. The breakdown is in our homes. And that's where it has to start. If we're looking to recover, we must start there. Family. In the black community, especially, I'm concerned. We have a 70% illegitimacy rate. And I believe much of this is intentional. Because if the culture collapses within the family, where else are people going to turn? Big government. And they come along and say, hey, I'm here from the government. I'm here to help you. And what ends up happening is a continual, perpetual cycle of ruin and we end up with families that have nowhere to turn but the government. Civic and political world. It's important that we're informed. Informed. We've got to have an informed electorate. Jefferson said whenever the people are well informed, they can be trusted with their own government. Well, you know what the opposite means, right? <laughs> if we're not well informed, one of my coworkers says, you know, if you're not well informed, do us a favor. Don't show up and vote. There's a lot of truth in that. We've got to be informed. We've also got to be engaged, which is a lot of what we're looking for here. As I wrap up here, I just want to put these out. And again, with those themes of being salt and light and providing discernment, here are some values we desperately need now. One of them, patience. The progressive movement, the socialist movement, they've been out pushing their agenda for over 100 years. Think about it, folks. They've been very aggressive and they've been very, very patient at the same time. Think of the modern Tea Party liberty movements that started, what, five, six years ago. And you've already got people that are giving up. I've talked to them. It's too hard. Nobody's listening. We can't get people engaged. We've got to have patience, folks. We've got to have patience. Realistic expectations instead of romanticism. This romanticism can take many forms. One of them is in the area of time, that we're going to turn this around in one, two, three election cycles. This is a battle for the long haul, and we must look at it that way. Romanticism says this candidate is going to come along. He's going to change the country. He's going to fix everything for us. Even if that were true, that's a very dangerous perspective. And what does that have to do with everything that we've been listening to today? Isn't it all about you, your engagement in the process, empowering yourselves? And here's another value we desperately need, self-control. Proverbs 25, 28, a man without self-control is like a city broken into and left without walls. Wow. What does this say? For the millions of people going to the polls, driven by what? What are they, so many people driven by today? Anger. Isn't that what we're talking about right here? We've got to channel these passions of ours. And if we don't have self-control, we will make some very serious mistakes along the way. And these things are all tied together. I want to wrap up by leaving you with some resources. I, I hope you have the opportunity to listen to my radio program, 10 to noon, 106.3 WORD. You can also listen online if you happen to be outside of the area. You can listen on the TuneIn app. Also, VinceCoakley.com. 
I want to draw attention to a video I'd love for you to check out. It's from last year's CPAC message. It was delivered by a man named Nigel Farage. How many of you are familiar with Nigel Farage? UK Independence Party. He delivers a powerful message about what's happened in the United Kingdom. You see, they've come to realize that the two political parties are very much operating on the same agenda. It's a merger of big government and big business. When I heard that speech, I thought to myself, that's exactly what's happening in America. Same thing. You can check out that video at vincecoakley.com. It's one of the resources I want to draw your attention to. They're also on the table out there. I have a political action committee. It's called Sacred Honor USA. And the goal is we want to send more people to Congress, like Jeff Duncan, like Thomas Massey, some of the, the champions who are willing to stand up for what's right. You see, one of the big problems, and this goes back to the issue of discernment, is that many times we don't make good choices. We turn the same people back in. I'll give you an example. I live in North Carolina. And while there's such anger, you know, probably 60 to 70 percent of the people voted for a non-establishment candidate. And yet we sent one of the most corrupt senators back to the U.S. Senate. How did that happen? It's called political schizophrenia. We're hyper-focused on the presidential race, and we're not paying attention. So these are the kinds of things that we are looking to reverse. I'll give you another brief example here that's so important. We also have a link for um, Conservative Review, which does an excellent job rating members of Congress, the House and the Senate. You can see your liberty scores. Wonderfully here in the state of South Carolina, you've got one senator has a very high score. He's doing very well. Your uh, members of Congress here in the upstate are also doing very well. And you need to do everything you can to stand with them, pray for them, encourage them. But at the same time, there's got to be a continued awareness. And these are things that are very important. So my message for you, and I want to leave this last thought with you, because one of the things we've done is we've tried to focus on making people aware, and this is the education part, making people aware of these liberty scores. And we produced a video on the race in Ohio, 8th District race in Ohio. How many of you know what happened in the 8th District in the primary this past week? Does anybody know? John Boehner's seat has now, it looks like it's going to be filled by someone who is a strong conservative Tea Party candidate. That's what's happened. That's what's happened as a result of people finding out what's going on. In fact, this was like a 14, 15 man race. People are waking up. And so these are the kinds of things that we can accomplish with a proper engagement. And it starts with governing ourselves, governing our families, governing our own lives, and at the same time, providing the kind of spiritual discernment and wisdom as we move forward. Thanks a lot. I appreciate you listening and look forward to continued engagement together. Thank you.